Hello, Heroin Church. Thanks for the video reply. I thought there was some stuff to think about in there and, um, and some points. So I'll get into the detail. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play uh, small segments. I don't want to take them out of context. Um, I'm using a little tool I'm making and, and you know, one of the things I'm going to do to help other people not they could still take things out of context, but one thing I'm going to do to address that is, you know, people will be able to vote and rate on those comments and whatnot. And I have a, you know, a theory about how to do that. It's not just thumbs up, thumbs down, that bullshit. I don't ever vote on the YouTube stuff, for example. I mean something different, but that's the idea. Community generated. Now, uh, the first note is at 27 seconds. 12 seconds. You sound just like me in that clip. Oh, because that is me. Yeah, that's basically the point of my video that you're responding to. I mean, that's pretty much it right there, right? Okay, so jumping ahead a few seconds. Um, that was fun, but I also feel kind of bad. It seems like there's something wrong about it. Sociopaths don't tend to feel like what they're doing is wrong. Okay, just to point out, I didn't say sociopaths. I know they don't feel. So obviously this person is not entirely sociopathic. Um, I, I, my description, and this is a point that you made, well, here. Usually the ones getting slapped, or the kitten that's being slapped, or the person that's getting slapped by that sociopath is going to be the one that is legitimately down on, this, on themselves, and they're the ones that you should be talking about. They're the ones that can't help it. They're the ones that are born with something that really damages them. Okay, so that and the other one. You, you brought up the sociopaths. Now, I'm talking not about sociopaths, but, but people that are on the, the slapper side. Now, the, the, the framing here, let me just be explicit, is that I'm talking about the people that have a reason. I mean, I'm saying you shouldn't feel bad about yourself in that video. And I'm telling you when to feel bad about yourself. And saying don't go crazy about it. Because people, you know, things like guilt use, feel, I think, my theory, uh, feeling bad about yourself um, as a way to sort of control you and as if the disorderly behavior s perpetuates itself through the guilt. People feel guilty and they feel bad and then they feel like, oh, I've suffered so much because I felt so bad and then they do it again. Like you say later, you know, that's how they purge themselves. So I just say to the bad people that are actually doing something bad, don't purge yourself that way. You might want to, if you're doing something bad enough, you might want to do it to stop. But eventually you're going to have to say, okay, now I'm going to go in another direction. That was the point of my video. So I happen to agree with who I should talk about. Um, and, and I am, even in this video in a way, they're a between the line element, but certainly not forgotten about. I mean, it's the kitten. Um, and, you know, I use a kitten. We have a kitten here and it's just the most love thing we also love the other pets just as much but it's very cute and all the kittens and puppies you know they get the kitty and puppy time they're not being selfish just because they happen to be the cutest thing around that's what it is when you you know it's good to get past that stage too so anyway i it, it's a metaphor that strikes you a particular way but think about it it's a very intentional uh, metaphor and i don't support any sort of slapping of kittens, the wrestling is okay. And it's recommendable. Um, but the part, let's listen to this second of those little pair of clips again. I mean, it's little because they're like 10 seconds or less, around 10 seconds. Usually the ones getting slapped or the kitten that's being slapped or the person that's getting slapped by that sociopath is going to be the one that is legitimately down on, this, on themselves and they're the ones that you should be talking about. They're the ones that can't help it. They're the ones that are born 
with something that really damages them. Right. So, the one thing to consider here, too, before I go on, is that um, sociopaths, it's like, how would you convince them? What, by what moral system? The only moral system a sociopath would understand if there was such a thing as a pure sociopath. I mean, think about it. Like you said, there's a lot of people like this. And only a few of them become the famously violent sociopaths. Most of them just act like jerks. Maybe inside, like other people with mental disorders, like, I wish I wasn't doing that. You know, you never know. There's this layers to people. Uh, but a lot of good that does us. And what it comes down to is when it comes to sociopath, we stop. Well, I will convince you not to steal. I will convince you not to take advantage. Because they will still just exploit the loopholes. It's like, they'll, if they do want an idea caught, they'll just figure out a legal way. To Those are the ones that we're always trying to chase around as they exploit loopholes, you know, more or less. Not that all loopholes are bad, per se, you know, but it, in general. So, um, those people just have to be fought, right? We just have to put those people on an island or something. Um, uh, if they if they can't live live with us, you know, and being a little bit of a jerk, we're all a little bit of jerks sometimes, so that won't be enough. But you know, I mean, obviously, if they're violent, they, you know, something's got to be done to take them actually out of society. If there's big jerks in there, you know, I don't know, defrauding people, uh, then that should be criminal. And and if they're just going around being annoying at parties, then I guess it's up to the host to not keep inviting them for whatever reason. Okay, what was this one? I didn't. I didn't change the note. Damages them, and it's not their fault, so oh. they can't just get over that. Let's just keep going. Right. Um, th so that was a little bit of an overlap there for a second or so, but um, I I'm not saying they can get over it. I I'm, I'm not talking about the kitten getting over the slap. I, I really... That's a bit between the lines. I understand why you bring up that issue, and that's one of the points I want to acknowledge from what you said. I think, you know, I don't like people to say I have to bring up every corner of an issue in a video. Uh, they're only so long, but I think that you know could have been brought. I could have made that more explicit. But um, but on the other hand, it's it's there in uh, whatever color filter I did it, if not black and white, and uh, you can see that the elements of the metaphor don't ignore this. I mean, that this is the kitten. And I didn't talk directly about the kitten. I was talking about how somebody could stop being mean to him. So, yeah. It's like, well, if I start doing this habit, I'll probably think differently after a while. And I do it, and oh, I think differently, but it's not what I thought. It was or I choose something else. <laughs> okay. So I was obviously talking there about how you can influence how you react in situations. Okay, there's also some implicit ideas about how you can't, how you're limited. Right? And you say immediately, well, a couple seconds after. You're trying to make it sound like people can choose the way that they think. I don't believe that that's true. I think that you feel an impulse and your thought is a reaction to so, uh, yes, that, that is exactly what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say it in this straightforward language. I mean, if there's one thing that I always believe in everything that I'm saying is that you can have an influence. Um, I feel that people thought, well, it's a magical power. You can think whatever you want, do whatever you want, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I know you can paint a picture, and you can paint whatever you want, but I only have blue and red. But I could still paint whatever I want in blue and red. You know, th those both can be true limits and freedom, and that's the real nature, and that's the metaphor I draw from for these kinds of things. Now, in terms of the specific thing of uh, how you can choose uh, what to think, it, it's a method. I said it. Let's listen again. It's like, well, if I start doing this habit, I'll probably think differently after a while, and then I do it. S see? So when you have some some habit of thinking, and there's ways to apply this to the kitten if it if it needs it, the kittens are uh, interesting, have their own kinds of methods, as cats do in general, which you must know. 
you, if you have some sort of way of thinking, I was pointing out, you could discover habits that, you know, perpetuate that. And you can find other habits, because we all have more than one habit, that don't perpetuate it, even if it's a bad habit, you know. Um, it's better if it's not a bad habit, but a bad habit can draw you away from something even worse. Or a bad habit, for example, that's self-destructive instead of destructive of others. and Or a bad habit that is uh, gross but not dangerous. Or a bad habit, you know, you could pull yourselves to bad habits that are more tolerable even. Of course, you're trying to find, if you're lucky enough to have a good habit, I'm not sure most people do or not. Um, that you know you try to use that one but the point is with one habit we, we are automatic creatures but we have more than one automation and we can help control which automation gets um, activated in you know a lot of ways but two ways I'll say one is what you, you think about okay but what should you think about well the, the second one is going a particular place a particular place that makes you think a certain way. Like, I hate the mall. It makes me frantic. Some people love it. It makes me a different way. Okay, I go to the ocean. It makes me a certain way. I go to visit a friend a certain way. And not a particular, certain, determined, particular way. But certain kinds of thoughts come up. Certain don't. And it's a, it's a palette. You know, like the red and the blue are palettes. And, and where you go, you can paint yourself an experience of your, you know, available automation. You have to trigger what you have in in you and that's why if you have one good thing then you you can't claim to be like triggerless All right okay but I'm gonna get into uh, not ignoring the rest of your point I'm just not through your video I'm not very far through at all doing is just saying that you should be blaming the victim Blame the person that is feeling bad because they do not want to acclimate to the situation. They don't want to accept something that they truly find unacceptable. I now, I want to say, I, I, one thing I liked about your video is I thought you were particularly trying to understand what I was saying. And, uh, you know, in Menham does that as well. And then you, you disagree. In Mendham's case, you know, he's misrepresented me and all the rest. Personally, I, I like that he took the time to try to figure out some of my idea. Uh, maybe it was, it's never going to be the whole idea, but uh, maybe it's the whole idea. And he's like, I just figured it out so I could say why crappy it was. I could tell it was crappy from over here. Whatever, you know. I mean, that's fair play. We want to find people we disagree with and can talk about. So if, if somebody listens to that degree, of course, it often, people get confused about this. Uh, don't understand what's going on because, you know, they... they People don't really understand how their own mentality is, is, works and what drives them to, to have these conversations. They have conversations with people. They just, I hate them. I don't respect them well. You know, there's an element of who your adversaries are, you know, who your enemies are, especially. You can judge a man more by his enemies than his friends in a lot of ways. Um, not if you could be inside his head, but uh, if, if, you know, if you had just have to look as a third party. So I did not blame the victim. Okay, I was talking about how perpetrators could stop perpetrating because a lot of perpetrators have moments where they want to stop perpetrating and they're in these habits like you're saying and you're saying well, they have no choice and they do there's other habits you end up beating people up at the park you know we'll look at you don't have to go down there why do you go there I just want to read a book but some jerk always comes and bugs me then you know you don't go down there. that's why I was talking about the perpetrators I didn't say the victim should just take it. I said the victim, as well as the perpetrator, shouldn't waste too much time. Well, let's put it this way. I didn't say anything about the victim. I said the perpetrators shouldn't feel bad about themselves ex except to stop the behavior immediately and then they need to get a more positive attitude to find something else and move somewhere else. If we're talking about the victims, they don't have to feel bad about themselves at all, right? They can blame the world. They can blame the person. They can blame a lot of things and have legitimacy. I'm just saying they don't need to blame themselves. In that case, they don't need to blame themselves. 
unless they had a chance to escape and they didn't in which they could go darn and that'll help them run for it when they have a 15 second window again and frankly I wouldn't beat themselves up too much about missing a, an escape window you know that you noticed it probably make you more likely to get the next one um, and so on you saw me probably think that I wasn't that bad looking, like I'm probably above average looking, I've got a lot of money, I've got every, all my needs met, but that- Well that sounds pretty good. Uh, I left it in the butt because there, there is more and here's that overlapping part. I've got every, all my needs met, but that one problem has taken all the value out of my life. Now am I supposed to sit around thinking about- oh. Well the problem you talked about uh, with me one reason I, I find this interesting to talk to you is, you is it also um, not to trivialize your personal life into a, a portion of the argument, but we're borrowing you as an example of substance because you're a real living person and I think it's one of the most interesting arguments about antinatalism. Uh, it, to me it doesn't argue for antinatalism, but it does argue for how unjust or tragic life can be. However, I've already mentioned about those other values and I already you know other people manage uh, and the reason you can is because well I have a certain desire. Look, your taste it may be biologically unavoidable that your taste is that specific wanting um, a, a straight man is yeah it sounds logically impossible there's weird you know, queer in a good sense ways that it could happen. But I understand what you're saying is that no, that wouldn't be good enough. I'm talking literally. It's it's logically impossible the way I want it. Right. But yeah, that part of your mentality, you know, could shift to you know somebody who is straight their whole life and you know discovered you and maybe you know you're the only reason or you know if you believe as I believe that a lot of people wouldn't you know that someone might meet you with personality, be open-minded enough and and have a relationship even though they were straight. Now the society would say, well, they aren't. But you know what I'm saying? There's room for you to figure out what's really going on in a particular situation. And I want to stay shy of like giving ideas. Hey, maybe you could do this. I don't know enough about your life. But I'm just saying in this the discussion, the intellectual part here and what you have shared, you know, you can't assume every particular detail, right, is exactly the way you feel you desire it. There's, there's other ways to interpret it and you know this from the fact that other people with similar situations have, have worked it out in different ways. You know those don't sue you so I'm not saying you can go just do that, no. But you know, I mean, what if there's somebody out there who is a straight man that wants a transgender woman and his mentality is that he thinks of you as a woman he, he is straight all his other girlfriends were you know girl girl girls you know what I mean I, I'm just again I don't want that to be like insulting that I would even suggest ideas I don't know I'm just saying you see how just like you have an interesting puzzle the way you were fit or unfit into the particular environment that you judge fit and unfit and I judge whether it seems like and I listen to you and judge whether you and that doesn't mean there's not other situations and in, in, in a sense that's our argument here with antinatalism is that I'm saying you know everything doesn't fit the way it starts out but there is room for everything everything could fit that's my belief you know except for violence basically So it's a little hard for me to just put on a positive thinking cap and just, you know, smile my way out of it. Yeah, and I'm not suggesting that uh, at all. I mean, everybody has problems out of their control, you know, bigger, lesser, more logically impossible, but some people have ones that are logically possible to solve, but they just don't have what it takes, you know. They just don't have the money or the other idea or the responsibility or whatever. Um, you have to live within the possibility space. Those are the things that are possible. 
even unlikely as long as it's possible. And there's a difference between possible and entirely impossible. In my opinion. So you can be critical on yourself, you know, realistically evaluating your situation, but you can't take any realistic action towards rectifying the situation? Yeah, you can. That, see, to me, that's totally backwards. Here's where we start to get into the part where, okay, you, totally backwards. You can take reaction. Just feeling bad about yourself does nobody any good. You could do it a little if it's helping you not to have some bad habit, but like in your situation, you got no bad habit except for maybe being down on yourself. I'm down on myself when I'm, you know, hanging out with uh, my great-great-grandfather's young lost cousin's friend. So don't do that as much. Yeah. Now you're saying, well, wherever I go, this comes with me. Well, but no, you have other interests. Now, I agree that that's what I'm saying. That's such a monumental interest. You don't even really want to call it an interest. It's a part of your life like eating and everything else. So I can understand that. On the other hand, there are lots of things like that to get power from. Of course, you know, if we were religious, we'd just go, well, God wanted you to walk this other path. And now that won't be, you know, you could be one of the people just naturally guru. But I don't really think that, by the way. If I was going to descend down to, to where I shouldn't, um, I'd say, come on, I'm from California. You know, but I understand what you mean. I got standards. I, I want to live in the communities. And I don't like the people to think that way. Or, right? and, you know, I'm a Republican or whatever. You know, this, I understand it. You know better than me it wouldn't fit. But when I think, well, what's really possible? I'm like, well, you know, it's a big, interesting world. But, like... Okay, in my case, if if you can't live in the city, then you can't take advantage of what there is in the world in terms of, you know, tolerance and chances and ex exploratory space for uh, all kinds of lifestyles. So right there, you know, and there's plenty of people that just can't stand living in the city, so they, you know, they, they get screwed, like you're saying. I acknowledge that. Yes, I'm never going to find love, but... I have a nice set of tulips. I really want all of the antinatalists and you as well, in my heart of hearts, to think about the people that don't, you know, the people that don't have tulips because they're working in a mine and 13 and on, uh, they have trouble finding true love too. I'm sorry, I just think the economic starving to death thing is... It's not worse, because the mental anguish of things, but you know what I mean? There's a mental anguish to being abused economically, and it affects your survival, and yet it doesn't kill you. I mean, that's the biggest argument for it. Antinatalism, for me, is not all the poetic things like you with the angst that you have you could become a great artist and turn that into something else and you might go it still wasn't worth living you know i know well, great artists are often like that but then from my point of view it's like wow that energy in this you know so whereas people that don't even have that chance because they're being abused that if, if people that believe that human race always has to survive that way then yeah, let's just off ourselves. On the other hand, I'm not worried because we're going to kill ourselves off if we're that way. The only way we're going to survive is if we figure it out. It's like people say, you've got to figure it out before you have kids. And I'm like, well, um, I, I'm hoping for the best. On the other hand, and, and then you could do things in your individual lives to survive. But in the whole human arc of the 7 billion people and stuff, we're not going to survive if we keep being jerks. Uh, so it's going to take care of itself, basically, in that sense, um, if, if it has to go away. Um, but I don't want the pain on the way and stuff, and I don't think that's the eventuality. I look at nature, and I don't see that. I see parts of us dying off, leaving the parts that are able to survive in this modern way we need to survive, which is tolerant and all of these things that we're not in that world yet. But if you can't see them coming, then... You're reading the wrong books, man. There's, seriously, there's 3,000 years of literature, probably, of this culture on 
cultural undercurrent rising. It's almost as if at the advent of writing, you know, it grew. And, but, but it goes back, I think, millions of years into animal evolutionary history. And, you know, just in my opinion, or the, at least metaphorically, the way I think about it, you know, it goes all the way back. But there's definitely something to the fact that writing gave us a, a slow advantage over time. I mean, they're running all the things in the short time, but like gravity, the so-called weakest of forces, you know, the shape of the universe is in the shape of the slowest force, not the fastest force. So I think, you know, writing helps intellectualism, which helps the peaceful because we can figure it out. And, and to me, antinatalism is like half of the solution of this shit is not okay. Uh, but it doesn't understand that we've been lied to about the possibilities. You have to go and look for the real possibilities yourself. Now, Christianity is all about the world's shitty, and the, it, that has been the tradition in these modern societies and, and slave societies. Yeah, it's shitty, so you're a slave. What? Life's shitty anyway. That's where that comes from, you know, in terms of political history, according to my research. So that's an extra reason, you know, that I think twice about that. And I think, well, I've got to go look for my own reasons, not necessarily chase the cheese or even something like be happy, you know, and I've found a whole clusters of things and they center around, first of all, that being interesting, you know, that there's something to figure out and if it's a problem, we'll fuck it, but, you know, at least I'll figure it out and there are insolvable problems, but what you can do is move your metaphorical geography. Okay, and uh, if you don't want to move or you're chained in place, then that's a difficulty. I'm not saying all problems can be successfully solved. Um, I'm saying various things. One, we're talking about um, particular things, but in terms of antinatalism overall, when we're arguing, what should everybody do? Um, you know, because I believe everybody should do what they figure out they think is right in issues like this. Okay. It seems like you're speaking for people that, you know, they might ha have a psychology that is a lot more sensitive than your own. Maybe. I don't know. I feel that I'm a very sensitive person. I always was. Um, and I just slowly, you know, I somehow young felt I don't want to have a shell. I don't want to have a wall. You know, a, I don't want to have a lead casket for skin, um, but I need to be tough. In life, you're supposed to be tough. You have to figure out a way. And I figured out a way that works for me, um, but I'm actually very sensitive. Uh, I just, now I don't let it go straight to the pain centers. It's like I jujitsu things. I bring things into my mind and I look at them. I don't let them go. I'm still sensitive, but I don't let just everything that's said to me go to the part of, that affects my emotions. Um, I, I look at it and I think about rational reactions before, you know, the, the emotional thing is, is people you're living with and loving and interacting with as, as, as uh, human beings. And, um, and even in that case, you know, you want to, wait, take this stuff like this because you can take something from someone you love the wrong way and go get all crazy about it. We all have done that, do that. Um, but so you can use this chamber. So uh, there's a distance and connection that's possible. I don't think you have to make a lead, you know, bubble from the world to protect yourself. Um, I, I, it's more like the metaphor of, of tough skin and skin gets tough over time. Um, so. You have to find something positive to emphasize. Really don't Why do I have to do that? Well, I mean, you don't particularly, everybody has to do it. I mean, the context of the video is that um, you have to do it if you want to feel differently. Like, I mean, we were just agreeing in the beginning, it, I believe you can affect yourself. and and. You, you, it's a geographic um, 
metaphor where every idea or emotion is you know somewhere some location of things that happen in that location are, are there as well and you need to find a way off that path and it's like there's a rut it can be a rut and you have to climb out of that a little bit and the easiest way is perpendicular you know if you try to climb up the wall like that it's it's bigger on the other hand depending on how good the grip is it can be a little bit less of a slope so maybe not perpendicular you know what i mean the metaphor is mostly the spatial part and that you have to change your location uh, like for example here's the uh, anyway here what if your kids got burned alive where are you going to find the positive in that i'm not going to find the positive in that to. yeah you're not going to i'm not going to find the positive in that that is frankly something you have to move on from now if you think remember my videos don't feel bad about yourself you think that somebody that has that happen to them should feel bad about themselves no but they will feel bad about that event the rest of their lives but that doesn't mean that they can't move uh, somewhere that they can still be comfortable in in other senses you know and they'll always be sad about that maybe they'll always be an activist about the issue it's like don't use balsa wood for your house or your house will crush your kids um and be an activist or do i mean a lot of people can solve that uh, most people after the grieving process for something like that find that to move away from the pain maybe to move away from that town get rid of the house and yet other people might be like no i want to keep the house and it's like they're there or whatever you know your personal taste that's the final thing and, and, and the detail and they but even if they move away from thousands of miles away maybe it's so terrible they move thousands of miles away they probably take a picture or something and have a memory they don't want the memory they want a connection to remain but to put some space between the events that are so terrible and that does work my friend that absolutely does work now i might not be good enough but then that's when you have to think about well how much of this is because i'm built this way and how much is because of the five percent where i could you know do this hobby ten percent more or ten percent less you can't change yourself overnight but you can go i'll do it ten percent you know i'll do it ten percent less i'll do it ten percent more you have you have influence like that and has an effect over a longer term so part of the thing is when you, if you're trying to change how you feel about something and you don't want to lie to yourself you're trying to find another valid way to look at it and often you find that it's more valid than the way you were looking at it when you're in pain i mean it's almost like the pain is your mind's way of telling you you're not in the right mental place just like the pain when you cut yourself it's saying that everything's not right right there so but in the mental pain you can slowly move somewhere else and it's to another valid position but it's slow because you don't want to just go wait fairies are true so i'm happy you know that's not going to work i mean some people do stuff like that i'm totally against that you slowly move to another true because truth is not a point it's a three-dimensional mountain and valley and plains it's a three-dimensional scape right and um there's harsh truths, some truths exist in places and deserts you wouldn't want to be in. But there's paths and whatnot to always a multitude of, a, of an environment that you're existing in. And you don't find something positive, but you move to a different place that is more positive. And you might, my point, like poetically, is you might not want to move too far. You might want to be able to still see that place and go out not live there or you might be the brave type that's just like actually if i run away then i'll feel terrible i'm gonna stay right here and just remember the good times or whatever depends a lot on your personal what the specifics of how things happen when they're this terrible um of course and uh and also your own emotional metabolism but nobody has an emotional metabolism that's just a statue they all move so they can all move 10% this way or 10% of that. And yes, yes, you can change where you live, how you think. In fact, if you change where you live, it will 100% for sure change how you think. That's not true. If I move to California, I won't start 
thinking like a Californian. No, I know you won't. You're not necessarily conformist. But you'll be in a different environment, and your environment is so much, it more than influences your thoughts. It, it, you fuse with it, and it becomes a kind of part of your thought, like a conscious part that you don't think you have control over. The irony is you do have control over because there's framing. You can't change it, but you there's framing if you think of it as a dump or if you think of it as a rustic. Okay. People think they're like, no, it's a dump, and I'm just the one problem. Let me tell you this. One problem with I'm a big. I was I'm. I spent you know, 13 to 23. I think I was the biggest cynic in the world. I built this. I've never forsaken the cynicism. Okay. Um. I just, uh, you know, there are ways to affect things. There's ways to steer. We all change over time. You know, a rudder is just a little tiny part of a ship. Okay. Final part. Well, the ones that remain motionless tend to be the ones that think positive because they just keep making excuses for a life that they find unacceptable. Well, let me think, let me explain that I don't think what you're talking about there is thinking positive. That's just fooling yourself. Like, that's pretending things are positive. Thinking positive is ways to make things better. I, that's, I'm a, that's what I mean when I say I'm a progressive. I think things can progress. So the only way to think positive is, you know, to identify things that could be better. Now, you're, the antinatalists are mistaken that the only way to make things better is to remove the thorns, so to speak. There are, there's also building a bridge, digging a well. You know, these things make your life easier. You might have only lived 50 feet from the water anyway, but they make your life easier and then you can live further away from the water and you get all kinds of freedoms maybe that you didn't even expect. So to think positive is not to be some suburban, you know, static kind of stereotype of people that are just competing with the Joneses and all the rest of that. There's some truth to that stereotype, but one of the really progressive revelations is that People are fucking up pretty bad, but they aren't themselves as bad as it seems. Um, but that's another story. Anyway, obviously, I don't even know how long this is, is but it could be an hour for all I could tell. So, obviously, uh, I did find it food for thought, and uh, I will await your reply uh, if you choose to make one. All right, cheers.